cover a few things in detail of what we went over in class a couple days ago. This will be fairly quick. I'm not gonna go through every little step. You have the checkoff form, but I encourage you to make this procedure your own. Uh, you can you do things the way you want to as long as they're still within, within the rules we set forth. So, okay. I'm gonna start with I've already sanitized. I've already checked my ID in my patient by checking <clears throat> the name and date of birth to the MAR and to what they say. I'm going to, I've, I've washed my hands. I'm going to ask them if they've had any facial fractures or facial surgeries, anything recently. She says, no, I'm gonna inspect, have them see which side is more patent. We're gonna go on the more patent side like we discussed. I'm going to measure this. I'll measure it over there so you can see. Tip to tip, around the ear. And then down to the, you guys all got this right, the xiphoid process, which is at the base of the sternum. I'm gonna mark that area with a piece of tape so I don't go past it. That's what I'm gonna to insert to. And then I'm gonna sanitize again and get my gloves on. Patient has a basin, patient has a blue pad on them because they will most likely vomit if it's a bowel obstruction and they're getting this procedure done. Absorbent side is out, so it soaks it up instead of just running down onto his gown. Okay. I'm gonna lubricate my tube two to four inches. Patient is in high fowlers, as high as the bed goes up. Patient is, the bed is up, so I can see more easily what I'm doing here. And move the basin just for now so you can see. Okay, lubed, I have the patient looking. I'm gonna go straight in, here we go, Helen. Straight in towards the ear. It reaches the nasal pharynx. Okay, Helen, this is what we talked about. Put your head down a little bit, take a sip of water or not. Every time she swallows, I'm gonna feel this tube go in. I'm gonna assist it a couple inches every time. Good job, swallows again. I'm gonna push it in a little bit more. Now the mannequin does not let me put anything past this point, and that's okay, because that's the up issue with the mannequin that we discussed. Even though my mark's down here, because it's a mannequin, I'm gonna say, okay, I've reached my mark. Now, if my patient's alert and oriented, I can say, okay, good job, open your mouth, the hard part's over. I can see the one tube going down the back of the throat. And now I'm going to tape, like we talked about. On the side of the nose, around the tube, so it reaches distally where it's dry. And then you can put that optional piece of tape over the bridge of the nose if you wish. Kind of nice for a second. Reinforcement. Okay. Now I'm going to, I've already made sure, I've looked in the oral pharynx. I'm gonna withdraw a few cc's of aspirate. I see that it is clear uh, green liquid. And I'm going to test the pH of that. So we have a soft confirmation and the pH should be less than five. And then I'm going to tape this to the gown. This is something we didn't cover, but I want you to see how it's done. And I should have ripped off one more piece of tape, but I didn't. So you're gonna stand here and watch me rip off tape. Okay. Here's how you secure it to the gown. You wanna give them enough room you're gonna end up pinning it to the gown through a piece of tape. You want them to have enough space that they can move their head left and right if they want to. You don't wanna tape it like this. He wouldn't be able to lift his head up or move it over to the side. So what you do is you put a piece of tape there. And then you pin the tape to the gown. You do not put the pin around the NG or through the NG. That way it's secured if the tube gets pulled on it's going to pull in the gown and not his nose, or her nose, whichever. Okay, send them to x-ray and you're all set.